Often I get questions such as, if everything is empty and an illusion, why bother doing anything? Or why would I work to improve myself or work for social justice if everything is empty? These are legitimate questions and I'm going to try to address them by means of the Two Truths teaching of the Buddha. At the end of the video, I will talk about how we can live our lives in the conventional world from the view of ultimate truth or enlightenment. The Buddhist doctrine of the two truths differentiates between two levels of truth or reality, the relative or conventional and the ultimate. In some ways, it's similar to the claim in quantum physics that the conventional world is an illusion which is derived from the deeper quantum realm. It's important to understand both the conventional and ultimate truths and to live with the realization of both. As Nagarjuna said, without a foundation in the conventional truth, the significance of the ultimate cannot be taught. And without an understanding of the significance of the ultimate, liberation is not achieved. When our Dharma practice starts, there's often a craving to connect with the ultimate truth and get out of the chaos and confusion of the personal realm. We may try to bypass the personal realm so we don't have to feel painful emotions or experience difficulties. This is sometimes called spiritual bypassing. The two truths teaching helps us avoid this as we come to see that both realities are equally true and tied together. Tibetan Buddhists would say that we must be careful not to lose our conduct and view, and not to lose the view in our conduct. In other words, we're careful and responsible in our conduct and behavior, and we realize at the same time that it's all empty. Conventional truth refers to the everyday understanding of things, which is based on our limited perceptions and conceptual understandings. This level of truth is important because we need it to navigate the world or interact with others, but it's ultimately limited and impermanent. It has its own laws, as we know, such as the laws of physics, of biology, chemistry, and these cannot be ignored, at least not if you want to survive. The aspects of conventional reality are sometimes called maya, a Pali word, or illusion, because we mistakenly believe that they are solid, separate, and independent realities. But they're not. And this isn't the problem. The problem is not relative truth itself, which is basically fine. It's our misunderstanding of its nature. We believe the illusion of the relative world, and this belief obscures our seeing of the ultimate reality of things. Insight meditation, or vipassana as it's called, is about seeing past the illusory conventional reality and clearly seeing ultimate reality. So what's ultimate reality or truth? This refers to the ultimate nature of reality and it's beyond our limited perceptions and conceptual understandings. It's beyond any dualism, in other words. This is where the term non-duality comes from. In Mahayana Buddhism, it's often referred to as emptiness. Uh, Zen Buddhist Thich Nhat Hanh refers it, to it as interbeing. It is the realization of this ultimate truth that leads to the liberation from suffering and the realization of enlightenment. How does this conceptual understanding that I'm presenting here of the two truths concretely help us? How can this understanding help us along the spiritual path? In a way, it addresses a, a few of the central resistances of the ego mind. You know, those questions I brought up at the beginning. If everything is empty, why bother? If I'm perfect just the way I am, why do anything to improve myself? Here's an important warning before I get into that. It's vital that we don't get stuck on or attached to the ultimate level of emptiness. As Nagarjuna said, that while attachment to the relative truth is a problem, people who are attached to emptiness are hopeless. He says this because if we're attached to the idea of emptiness, we think, ah, oh, there's some harmful behavior, but it's empty, so no problem. This is what Nagarjuna was referring to when he said, those who believe in emptiness are incorrigible. So how does seeing the two truths help us live constructive lives. When we see the true nature of things and understand that the relative and ultimate are actually one, 
uh, then we are able to discern what actions in the world are helpful and useful or wholesome and which are not. This, um, the movement of compassion and wisdom become fused. We operate in the world for the benefit of ourselves and for the benefit of others without being overwhelmed by suffering. As the late Korean Zen master Sung Sang put it, there's no right and no wrong. Everything is essentially empty, but right is right and wrong is wrong. The more we are freed from the egoic self-concern, the more our heart is open and compassionate. We see the emptiness of self everywhere, while also seeing the suffering that arises in the relative world. It's this balance. Too much emptiness, and there may not be movement to compassion. We need to see when emptiness becomes a fixed view and closes the heart. At the same time, if we fixate on the relative level, there's not the inner balance and peace needed to help others uh, in the world. Padma Sabhavana, uh, who brought uh, Buddhism to Tibet in the 8th century, said, Though the view should be as vast as the sky, keep your conduct as fine as barley flour. He is saying that we can be as vast and, and unlimited as the sky, and at the same time, our behavior is careful and discerning as to what is beneficial or harmful. Can we keep that big mind and still that, that kind of granular attention to the details of our life in the conventional uh, realm? This is what it means to respect and live both truths. I hope you found this uh, talk helpful and uh, please, if you uh, enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel and I'm totally open to any comments or questions that you might have. Um, be well and uh, see you again soon.